Now, to keep, uh, let's talk a little more about this calcium issue. Very early on when I started using this treatment, um, I was using different types of calcium. You know, we've commonly used calcium citrate in the autism community um, because it's a, a good form of calcium to give. It's, you know, easily absorbed and it's, and it's used in many different types of supplements. A lot of different companies carry calcium citrate. Plus, we know that calcium citrate is the ideal form to give when oxalates are a problem. We certainly know a lot of kids have oxalate issues. So we'll give calcium citrate to try to bind up some of those oxalates. <clears throat> And what was generally being recommended, or still is being recommended, is to primarily, if you can, is to use calcium carbonate. Now, a lot of people have sort of stayed away from calcium carbonate because it's an alkalizing agent, um, and it, neutralize, it can neutralize stomach acid and whatnot. It's found in Tums. Um, and some people have had a problem with that because they feel that you don't want to be inhibiting, if much as you can, digestive hydrochloric acid and, and whatnot to help digest food. But um, what the Respinate people have found, um, and honestly, I have found in my practice because I tried it both ways. I tried calcium citrate and calcium carbonate, is that over time I've learned that the calcium carbonate is the preferred form of calcium to give with Respin A. It's not to say that some kids haven't done okay with the calcium citrate, but anymore in my practice, when I'm looking to implement this treatment, I really do want to use the calcium carbonate. Um, because it does seem to, to work better in most individuals who are taking this therapy. There appears to be a problem, and I know there's been a number of doctors who've used Respin A early on and found some disagreeable side effects um, that parents reported to them and then gave up on the therapy. Um, and it looks like primarily they may have been using the calcium citrate with their kids and not switched over to the calcium carbonate. And this could have led to some of the problems because if the child was having irritability, crankiness, um, muscle aches and pains, you know, problems like that. It was probably a calcium problem because they were using the citrated form um, where they could have used the carbonated form of calcium and it probably would have remedied the situation. So there's a lot to learn about the therapies, uh, about this therapy, you know, as a parent and certainly as a physician. So the subtle nuances of giving it, um, recognizing when to change, when to change the dosages, when to change the calcium forms. It's like any biomedical therapy. There's always a learning curve that comes with implementing it, but most things are easily resolved. You know, if as a parent you keep in contact with your physician, let them know what's going on, um, and also keeping up on, on some of the research as well. There's a, a Facebook page now that you can get more information um, through Facebook on Respin A. So you can go to Facebook and, and look for Respin A, and they do have a, a Facebook page now where there's a lot of questions and answers. I also have a tremendous amount of information on my membership site at autismactionplan.com, uh, and this is a place that I have audio recordings and written material on Respin A, uh, as well as being able to ask me questions through the parent forum. So to keep things simple, okay, I have found that ideally, Calcium carbonate is the preferred form of calcium to use with Respin A. Citri citrate may work, but if at all possible, I would use the calcium carbonate first, and you may find that you have to go to citrate later. Um, if you are using citrate, if you are finding the irritability, the agitation, the muscle aches and pains, whatever that can happen, um, you're probably going to need to switch over to the calcium carbonate form. Thanks.